The fundamental operation of the maniac is illustrated by a block diagram of its basic components. A problem is fed into the input section, a little at a time. As soon as the input is loaded to capacity, the control is notified and responds by sending back to the input an order to deposit its contents in the memory, making room for more of the problem in the input. This goes on rapidly until all of the problem is in the memory. The solution of the problem then begins. A button is pushed and the control tells the memory to send some material down into the arithmetic unit so it can be worked on. When an operation is completed, the arithmetic unit notifies the control. Intermediate and final answers are stored in the memory. Finally, the control instructs the memory to deliver the answer to the output and orders the output to phrase the answer in usable form. The maniac can be useful only when it is told precisely what to do in a language it understands. A problem submitted to it for a solution must contain two kinds of information, the actual numerical quantities involved and directions indicating exactly how they are to be handled. This material is logically interwoven in a preliminary coding process where it becomes a collection of symbols depicting the operations in the computer required to accomplish the solution of the problem. The coder works from a flow diagram which has been drawn up by the author of the problem. This diagram is essentially a picture of the path to be followed by the computer in the solution of the problem. The diagram consists of directional flow lines broken at appropriate points for the insertion of boxes indicating the computation to be performed locally. Represented here are various necessary logical steps and decisions as well as purely mathematical operations. Also memory information where necessary. A problem in its final coded form is a sequence of instructions. Each instruction is made up of an order and an address. An order is a command to the machine to perform a specific operation. In code, it is a combination of two letters in the range A through F. There are about 30 such combinations in use. Problems of commonly used types are accumulated in a tape library. The use of the basic portions of these problems in the taping of similar problems results in a considerable saving of time. A taped problem enters the computer through a photoelectric reader which feeds in words at the rate of about 20 per second. The end of the tape is placed in the reader, the load switch is flipped, and the problem goes into the machine. An average problem is loaded in perhaps 15 seconds. In the reader, the problem becomes the series of electrical signals with which the computer does its work. The signals are sent first into one of the six registers of the arithmetic unit. A register consists externally of a horizontal row of 40 neon lamps set in a narrow strip of black bakelite. Vertical white stripes divide the main registers into groups of four lamps, representing tetrads. Each lamp is connected with an electronic flip-flop circuit. Each register thus contains 40 flip-flops. A lighted lamp results from a hole in the tape and means a binary one. No light is a blank or a binary zero. Thus, a register may be regarded as an indicator of events occurring in the arithmetic unit. The problem is next transferred from the register to the memory. The maniac's principal memory is of the electrostatic type, utilizing 40 standard 2-inch cathode ray tubes mounted in individual metal cases above the arithmetic unit, 20 at the front and 20 at the rear. A tape can be designed to write almost anything in the memory. The register and memory 
are connected in a so-called parallel fashion. One flip-flop of the register communicates through an electronic gate with one and only one storage tube in the memory. For convenience, all material of a particular type used in the computer is stored in its own arbitrary block of addresses in the memory. The blocks are filled with words in a definite sequence, from top to bottom and from right to left. A spot in any tube is the residence of one of the 40 binary characters of a word. All characters of the same word reside at the same address in their respective tubes. The memory, when completely filled, contains a total of 1024 times 40, or 40,960 binary characters. The array is about an inch and a half square. These spots on the tube faces are being regenerated continuously. If they were not, they would fade away in a short time, and important information would be lost. An auxiliary storage device, a rotating magnetic drum with 200 heads, increases the memory capacity of the machine by a factor of 10. Words are handled in blocks of 50. The relatively slow operation of this system makes it useful only as a supplementary memory. To prevent excessive loss of time and information in case of power or component failure, blocks of material are brought out from the memory and put on magnetic tape to be referred to if necessary. This feature is especially useful in the case of unusually long problems requiring several hours of computation. A problem may reside in the memory indefinitely, but it can't be solved there. The instructions of which it is composed must be withdrawn in proper sequence, interpreted, and carried out. The solution of a problem starts when a button on the operating desk is pushed. Instructions are transferred from the memory to the top or control register of the arithmetic unit. Orders and addresses are separated in a set of function circuits, and orders are sent to a diode matrix for interpretation. While addresses go to the memory control circuits for consultation of the specified spots in the array. The matrix is a sorting device. Each of the 30 odd orders which might enter it is recognized and sent to an electronic programmer which arranges for the execution of the order. The active elements of the matrix are crystal diodes which are mounted in sets of six on octo plugs. The memory circuits act to question the address involved in the instruction to determine what information it contains. This information is sent to join the order information in the programmer. The required operation is then performed and thus an instruction is carried out. 